The primary purpose of a finish is to protect the wood, but it's undeniable that the natural beauty of the wood is also revealed when that first coat of finish is applied. Or is it? Some may say that wood finishes alter the appearance of natural wood by adding a yellow or amber hue. A piece of maple, for example, may be nearly white when bare, but depending on the finish you apply, it may become yellow or even kind of brown. Some people like this effect because they think it gives the project a rich traditional appearance. But what some consider traditional, others consider old fashioned. They want to see the natural color of the wood, unaltered by the finish. Today, we'll discuss why yellowing occurs and what types of finish you may or may not wish to use depending on how much yellowing you want. While there are all sorts of different wood finishes out there, if I were to look on the shelf in 99% of your workshops, I bet I would find one of four types of finish. A water-based polyurethane, an oil-based polyurethane, an alcohol-based shellac, or a natural penetrating oil such as tongue oil or boiled linseed oil. All of these have their own characteristics, which might make them a good or a poor choice for your project. But our focus is on how they change the appearance of the wood. A natural oil finish will obviously change a wood's color. You can tell that just by looking at how yellow it is before you apply it. That's simply what plant squeezings look like. Tongue oil and boiled linseed oil will both yellow and darken the wood more than other common finishes. Linseed oil in particular will darken even more over time as it breaks down. The natural components in the finish just darken as they're exposed to light. Oil-based polyurethane, including Danish oil and tongue oil blends which contain polyurethane, will yellow the wood a bit less but still noticeably. This is due to the manufacturing process that utilizes what are called aromatic isocyanates. Over time, UV rays will break these compounds down, producing chemical byproducts that cause the finish to become even more yellow, or some might say more rich and golden over time. Water-based polyurethane isn't just more clear because it lacks oil as its solvent. Depending upon the quality of the finish, Water-based poly may contain aliphatic isocyanates, which are more resistant to UV light and do not produce the same yellow chemical byproducts. That doesn't mean water-based poly will always remain crystal clear, but the yellowing effect over time will be much more subtle than with oil-based poly. Interestingly, when I say water-based polyurethane, many people think of Minwax polycrylic finish. Polycrylic is a proprietary product that's similar to traditional polyurethane finishes, but with some key differences in chemical makeup. The end result is it does not yellow at all, not even over time, but it can produce a milky appearance that some would argue is worse than yellow. Shellac is the most common alcohol-based finish in small woodworking shops. It's simply secretions of a beetle dissolved in alcohol. Alcohol is obviously clear in color, and it entirely evaporates as the finish dries. So any discoloration to the wood is a product of the bug's secretions, and what he secretes depends on what he eats. That's why there are different shades of shellac, from orange brown to nearly clear. I say nearly because no shellac is perfectly clear. It will change the tone of your wood at least a little bit, but shellac doesn't darken over time like other finishes. So in the long run, it may have minimal effect on your project's appearance. We haven't touched on lacquers because I think they're less common in small woodworking shops, but in general, lacquers do yellow over time, some quite a bit. So what does all this mean for your project? It means that there is no perfect finish that will preserve the wood exactly as it appears when it's bare. All finishes will have some effect on the color and overall appearance of the wood. Water-based polyurethane will have perhaps the least yellowing effect when it's applied, and changes over time may be minimal. But it tends to give the wood a very plasticky appearance. It may even cloud the grain. I compare it to floor wax. So what you gain in natural color, you may lose in natural overall appearance. That said, there are advancements being made in water-based finishes and I cannot speak to every brand out there, so I recommend trying some of the higher quality water-based polys 
on some scraps and seeing how they look for yourself. Shellac is perhaps second to water-based poly when it comes to preserving the wood's natural color, as long as you buy the lightest, highest quality flakes and you dissolve them yourself in alcohol. Pre-mixed shellac will be blonde at best. And shellac will not darken over time, though there does seem to be some debate on that point. Shellac also preserves the depth and clarity of the wood fibers, but it isn't terribly durable, so that's something you should keep in mind if your project will see a lot of use, such as a tabletop. Oil-based polyurethane is one of the more durable finishes common to small shops, but it gives the wood a more golden appearance, especially light-colored wood, and over time, depending on how much light it's exposed to, oil-based poly will become even more yellow. Natural oil blends bridge the gap between poly and natural oils. These include cans that are labeled Danish oil or tongue oil finish rather than pure tongue oil. You could also include water locks in this category. Many of these claim to preserve the wood's natural appearance, but the yellowing effect will vary from brand to brand. All of them will yellow the wood to some extent because the natural oils they contain are simply yellow. But the only way to know how much it will affect your project is to just try a sample. And that leaves us the pure oil finishes such as tongue oil and boiled linseed oil. As I said, you can see that they're going to yellow the wood before you even put them on. But is that really a bad thing? Because while these finishes may alter the natural color of the wood, they preserve the depth and beauty of the grain. I think that's the most important factor. I like to work with wood, not plastic. And wood itself changes color over time, no matter what finish you apply. So I think the right finish is one that most enhances, embraces, and preserves the wood's beauty. See you next time. For the last several years, I've been replacing my cheap drill and Forstner bits with quality bits from Fish Tools. They're a family-run company that still forges their bits the old-fashioned way. Try replacing your most used bits with Fish Bits using the links in the notes below this video, and you'll see why I love them so much. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe, and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.